Poundland has been putting out a whole flurry of different USB power supplies recently. And this is one of the latest. It's a, It seems to be the main one in the shops at the moment. It's, it's based on the sort of standard British plug top with the uh, connector actually facing out the way as opposed to down in the other ones. So let's test this out. Let's see if it goes bang first. I have to say the previous uh, power supplies I've been checking from Poundland have been superb. They've been very good. So it's putting out 4.99 volts. That's a good start. Let's uh, get the test load into it. Let's wind this right down. Uh, I think it is already wound down. Plug this in. And then we'll ramp it up and see what we get. So I'm going to start turning it up. And getting sudden burst of activity. That must have a sort of dead zone at the potentiometer. So 500 milliamps, it's holding fine. 700. 800. The voltage is dropping slightly, but the 4.9 volts is still okay. Uh, so we're approaching an amp. How far can we go past an amp? Let's hold... Oh. It suddenly cut at exactly an amp. It suddenly cut down to 3 volts. Let's wind that back down again, see if it kicks back up again. And it has. Okay. Right. That's a good start. I'll give this a wee thermal test later. But first I'm going to open it up. Uh, for those asking, this little uh, load came from eBay. It's they seem very common in eBay and likewise. This is a K-E-W-E-I-S-I -E -I load meter. I'm not convinced that this one is super accurate though. It seems to vary quite dramatically in accuracy across its range. I don't see any fixing, so this is either glued shut, which would be annoying, or it's clipped shut, which uh, some one of the biggest bugbears in these power supplies, one of the biggest recall issues is if they're clipped shut and the clip clip isn't actually very strong. Oop, this one seems to be very strong. Oop, that's not too bad. I've been warned, there's a little insulator in these that can ping out because other people have been taking theirs to bits. There's a little insulator. Oh, I see where it goes. Right, okay. Right. Ah, oh, look at the separation in that. Look at that separation. It's living up to the standards of the Poundland stuff. That's very good. That's a massive field. And then they've got an actual slot through there. And when I took this off, this bit of plastic was in there, providing extra shielding against something here failing and actually flashing over onto the low voltage side. This is looking very good so far. We've got what could either be, is that a fuse or is it a, oh, there's an inductor as well. There's actually filtering. This and the proper uh, class Y capacitor here. And the transformer has the sort of double insulated wire coming out of it. I shall strip this afterwards. Once I've tested this, uh, I'll take a, I'll do the test after this, but I'll put it back together for that. And then I'm going to strip that transformer and see what it looks like. It does have a lot of interesting circuitry, though. It's got a little switch mode chip, which I cannot read, but I shall... You know what? I'm going to put this together again, and I'm going to give it a thermal test, because I should have done that uh, before, but of course it was still in the packet. And then uh, I'll let you know what the t test result was, and I'll also check up these figures, and I'll probably get the transformer off and get it ready just to unwind, so I'll be back in a moment. Well, so far the exploration is all good. If you look at this unit, it's got this protective plastic plate between the circuit board and the live connections and the back of the pins which are gooped in as well. They're covered a bit of silicon, and there's also silicon tacking the wires onto the circuit board, and they're sort of modestly sized silicon cables. When the power comes in, it goes through a 4.7 ohm metal film resistor, which uh, is sleeved, which will act as a sort of current limiter, and also act as a sort of safety fuse to actually break, break the circuit in the event of a failure. The Chong X capacitors, that's maybe a slight downside, are silicon down onto, in this case it's silicon down onto the top of the bridge rectifier, not a great deal because the rectifier won't get that hot. 
Uh, between the rectifier, um, should I say, the rectifier comes out, then it's got a 4.7 megafarad capacitor, and then a 2200 microhenry inductor, then a 3.3 microfarad capacitor. So that's the first stage of filtering. The chip is a HX3801, and this uh, circuit is basically what you see here. It's got the snubber network uh, across the primary winding. It's got an auxiliary, uh, sort of, it's got a dual secondary, it's got the isolated secondary, which is very isolated, and the uh, primary side secondary for actually powering the chip and also providing feedback. And the feedback can be done seemingly by, I can only see one of these resistors, but uh, I'm not sure if the other one is just tucked away somewhere, but um, the feedback, may, it may be able to just take a direct feedback because this chip can also deal with uh, voltages up to 50 volt now put for uh, driving uh, LED lamps and stuff like that. But in this case, it's just 5 volt. So that winding provides the feedback voltage, either directly, I'm guessing, or via this uh, divider. But it also provides the power via the diode to power the chip. And when you power the chip on, this uh, capacitor here trickle charges through this resistor until the chip can kick into action. And when it does, then this diode and this winding provides the power instead of having to rely on that uh, high value resistor. It's just a way of starting these chips up. Uh, the output, uh, the main differences between input and output, uh, the main difference in the input is we've got the fusible resistor. Uh, we've got uh, the uh, decoupling capacitor going to the negative on that side and it's coupling in this instance to the negative on this side. So basically speaking, we've got that uh, class Y suppression capacitor and th in this case it's 2.2 nanofarad. And it is a proper class Y capacitor, so that is good. It's got lots of interference suppression stuff. This chip can also uh, deal with things like being on light load. It won't uh, make noise. It's supposed to be quite quiet in the sense that it can control things like that. I'm not sure if it just detects when there's a low load and stops pulsing the output on and off. Uh, it maybe just shuts down until it detects, you know, just pulses it every so often instead of like some of the, these power supplies when they're on a light load, they make a sort of like slight buzzing noise. So this one theoretically doesn't uh, do that. It's got a chip dedicated to avoid things like that. So we've got the sense resistor down here, which senses the current that flows through the primary. We've got the snubber network. Um, the other thing about the input here, there's two capacitors which I've already mentioned, and the inductor, which is a, a stage of filtering. It's all very good. Likewise, in the output, there is a secondary uh, little uh, suppression capacitor, and then there's another uh, electrolytic, just partly to save space uh, inside in the on the circuit board by using two smaller electrolytics in the space of one, in case of a larger one. The diode, because it's going to get quite warm under full load, has good, decent pads coupled through both sides to help with the heat dissipation. So, all pretty textbook. You can see uh, the snubber network tucked in here. It's quite beefy components. It's all, you know, it's all proper design. Uh, the transformer, I've stripped it back, and it is, it's, although it's got sleeving coming out, it is the thicker insulation wire. And although it comes down close to the primary windings going in, it doesn't really matter in this instance because they have compensated the fat with this much thicker insulation, you know, it's not this thin spidery insulation. So the, there's the outer layer of the secondary, which is wired in this, you know, this heavy insulation, which is good, good stuff. Uh, and then there's going to be, if I can find a screwdriver to get this started, picks up the wrong screwdriver. Then I'm guessing the sense winding is going to be next. It doesn't really matter after this because we've discovered what we really wanted to know here. And that was what the isolation is from the primary to the secondary. And the primary to secondary isolation is very good. It's certainly a lot better than many other, certainly, most certainly a lot of the cheapy ones from, from eBay. It's up to a good standard. I'm quite happy with that. But then again, as I say, Poundland, not Poundworld. Poundworld do pretty bad stuff. Poundland, though, are, are really a, a cut above that. They do this good stuff. So, yep, it's uh, then it's got the, I'm guessing, the sense coil. Um, is it the sense coil? Yep, it's just one layer of sense coil, and then after that, it's the primary. So, yes, uh, unless the sense coil was wound inside the primary there, 
Maybe if I'd been a bit slower and more careful, I would have found that out, but I wasn't. Um, I may have, maybe actually, while I was trying to get this out, it's quite hard removing the pins from the circuit board. Uh, so is this actually going to be... This should reveal. Yeah, that is still... That is still... Um, primary. So I'm guessing the sense coil was actually wound. Oh, maybe not. That was the sense coil on the outside of that, and then the primary will be in the middle. So yes, that's a, it's, it's neat. It's very good. It's very good quality. I wonder how it will stand in continuous use. I measured the temperature of the chip at one amp, and the one amp load, maximum load, was 85 degrees Celsius in this sort of fairly coolish environment here. So it's going to get hot, but I'm guessing it's got thermal protection. Under just 500 milliamp load, it was running at 54 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely fine. And like most of these things, you know, they design them, you know, if it's rated one amp, it's, you know, that's the maximum you should really push it. And I'd rather run these things. That, they're going to last a lot longer if you run them at lower levels. So um, I'd say one amp, it should be fine. But at 500, amp, 500 milliamp, it will be absolutely fine. So these, for a pound, are just perfect. They're ideal for powering a lot of small 5-volt projects because the isolation is there, the protection is there, the filtering is there. They're, they're all in all. Um, as I say with most Poundland power supplies these days, they're, they're very good.